All right, welcome back, everybody. The Business Roundtable Podcast with your hosts, uh, David Carr and Bill Hatch. Uh, David Carr here of Steward Your Business, where I help small business owners and their teams and individuals help to know themselves better, to lead themselves, uh, leading their teams more effectively. And we're going to be talking a bit about that tonight. Bill, why don't you introduce yourself? Hello, once again, uh, my name is Bill Hatch. I am a leadership guide uh, working on my book. And uh, I'm also a podcaster under the banner of Bald Spots Productions. So glad to have you back, Bill. Uh, Glad to be back. Yeah, we had a great conversation uh, last time uh, talking about our client journey. And so I thought it'd be a good one, though, to talk about uh, company roles and responsibilities this week. It's come up with a number of of clients. And uh, going into the beginning of the year, um, we're, we're oftentimes looking at performance reviews and other elements. So I th- thought, Bill, it'd be great to talk with you about what does that look like, especially in in, in an ever growing organization. And um, and so, yeah. And I don't know about you, Bill. I'd love to go get your thoughts here in a minute. You know, have you gone to an organization or somewhere? It doesn't have to be a business. Could be a church. Could be any organization where you were asked to do some things, but it wasn't clear, like what's my role here? What truly is my responsibility and what's the responsibility of somebody else? Uh, have you had that experience? I, I have, um, primarily in my, uh, in my younger days, um, <laughs> when there wasn't quite so much, uh, gray hair, yeah. but, uh, um, you know, as I gained more experience, of course, I began insisting on, uh, on having things clarified and written down, um, mm-hmm. You know, but uh, um, but yeah, I've I've had jobs where uh, where people use the and other things as necessary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that's just not uh, that's not the way to to go, um, right? You know, it's I, I mean I can understand there being having to be some flexibility. Yeah, but having like three job duties and then whatever else we tell you. Mm-hmm. not so good um, right you know that's that's uh that's asking for trouble um <laughs> you know you wouldn't you wouldn't do that if you were hiring an outside agency mm-hmm. because you'd expect that outside agency to only do what you've hired them to do yep you know only what you pay them to do their scope right um, yeah their scope and uh um you know as opposed to hiring some you know like uh well like an intern for instance, um, this is a this is a big deal one. Um, you know, you can have you can have unpaid interns. Unpaid interns are great mm-hmm. as long as you're not paying them legally. Yep. <laughs> or yep. legally not paying them. You know, and you have to be very clear about what they're doing, what their jobs are. Um, you can't just have them do everything. Like, did you know that you can't have an unpaid intern do something that would normally be the job of another employee? Mm-hmm. Very so, important. Uh, yeah. So if you have a secretary, even if that secretary is really busy, you can't have your unpaid intern type up a letter. Not legally. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, you know, and, and it, it goes, it goes all over the place with, uh, with that. It just goes from there. Yeah. Um, especially with growing businesses, mm-hmm. um, you know, they, uh, um, you know, the, the solopreneur moves up to the, to the entrepreneur level with, uh, with right. a couple of employees. And now all of a sudden you've got to figure out what these employees are going to do. And you have no idea because you haven't done HR before, not in any sense of the word. And HR is a lot harder to do than accounting. Yes. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Counts the numbers. You're you're dealing with people with yeah. HR. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. That's why. That's why I usually recommend an outside uh, an outside HR uh, um, company um, like mm. uh, um, a friend of mine, uh, Petros Frangos. Um, a, a Greek gentleman who uh, who knows his coffee. Uh, <laughs> he uh, he's the uh, president and CEO of a company called HR On Call, and they do a a uh, like a menu of items, mm-hmm. everything from the value menu on up to the uh, all on up to the the full we're taking over um, side of things. And I recommend highly finding a company like that. 
um, yeah. for your uh, for your HR needs. Um, because yeah, well, I think that's a, I mean that's a good point. We talked about this in previous episodes too, Bill. Like, when do you need to get help? And mm-hmm. part of the reason why we even do this podcast is to provide value and help, at least to make you sure aware, right? Like you just talked about the internship side of things or things. Be aware of these resources out there that you don't banging your head against it. You'll save yourself a lot of time and likely money in hiring somebody like you just said that knows this very well and help guide you so you're not spending a lot of time and effort on things that are not very fruitful for you right right? or could be very negative for you very negative right Mm -hmm. so so you touched on something i want to i kind of want to unpack a bit here as you said you know going from your solopreneur yeah and we talk on this podcast we talk about you know businesses from the solopreneur to the small business owner and, and beyond um but there is a life cycle to a business. There's, there's things that happen at different stages there. And so, you know, when you're thinking about roles and responsibility, I think, you know, that organizational shape or org chart changes over time. And sometimes we think it might be static or we don't reevaluate that and what that should be. I mean, you have this very, sometimes they're very flat. Sometimes it's very hierarchical. Um, neither are bad or good there, depending on where you're at in, in the business life cycle, in my opinion. Um, but maybe talk a minute about bit bill about that. Cause you talk about leadership as I do. I'm passionate about that as well, about yeah. how do you, you know, lead well and look for that. Because you, as, especially let's say going from a solopreneur and you've now you've added some employees, you're growing some things to consider in how you put your organization together wow um yeah that's that's big um yeah well um i mean the first and and simplest thing is your job descriptions you know when you add an employee um you need to you need to add those job descriptions and they need to be as detailed as possible um you know, uh, um, I, I always when when I look at this, I always think of the uh, of the U.S. Constitution. Um, the most detailed part of the uh, um, of the Constitution is the is the rights, responsibilities, and duties of the U.S. Congress and and Senate. Um, and they have the and it turns out over the course of time that their powers are the most limited. Mm. The least descri- described is the uh, is the job description of the president. They did that because they didn't want to give the president powers. They wanted to to have a, a, as powerless an executive as possible. They were recovering from a monarchy, and mm. uh, so it's understandable why they would want to limit the powers of the chief executive. But it turns out that by not describing things. They kind of open the floodgates for uh, for what powers uh, for what for what uh, you know he could do or she mm-hmm. uh, at some point uh, as uh, as history will uh, will tell, um, and so uh, um, so you have to kind of balance somewhere in between there of having you know the limitations of a very well described job mm-hmm. and versus a not described job. Um, mm-hmm. You know, of course, today a person's going to say, "Well, you didn't say this in my in my job description. That's not my job description." I hate it when people say that because it, it very much shows a lack of ownership in the company. But right. uh, um, you know, it's like you you as an employee should have some flexibility as far as what you're willing to do. You know, it's like there's a reasonable there there's a reasonable amount of flex should mm-hmm. be there. You know. Um, no, if you were hired as an engineer, you shouldn't have to clean the bathrooms. That's a different job entirely. Right. But if something need, if some engineering drawings need to get um, need to get filed properly, that's at least related, and I and mm-hmm. I could see needing to have some flexibility in there on the part of the employee. Um, right. Yeah. But of course, uh, you know that could be that's something that could be foreseen by the employer as well yeah um, you know well uh, you... i want to i want to comment because you you made a statement which i think is uh about a, a new this is a nuance so i'll just i wanted to yeah. say job description 
and and I uh, and and I sometimes people intermix these, and I'm I'm, I'm going to clarify for me, Bill, so we're on the same page, but. <laughs> Sometimes I'll say job description is what they pull off the advertisement on the website saying, or, you know, whatever the, whatever the site is, right. Or advertising for this person that we need. Mm -hmm. It's a marketing thing to a certain degree saying, Hey, this is what we'd ideally like to have. Right. Da, 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 da. And they kind of put their wish list out there of this is, this would be the perfect thing. Then there's the reality of showing up at your job and actually like, okay, this is your absolute define roles and responsibilities so they could be one and the same but they do serve different purposes so i wanted to just make a point of distinction is that oh, yeah. what is put out there as your advertisement that job posting saying hey come work for us may not may not totally meld hopefully it does but i just want to be people aware you might get hired in one thing and saying yeah da, 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 but the reality is you get in and they say this is your official role in the company right. that makes sense bill yeah, yeah. Um, no, it absolutely makes sense because I, I couldn't see since you're selling the job, I couldn't see advising somebody to to detail put every detail of the job description into the ad anyway, yes. right? Because <laughs> um, it doesn't leave any room for questions. You right. Know, oh, okay. There's the there's the three pages worth of uh, worth of job yeah, descriptions. Don't... Yeah, you know, forget that. I'm I'm not uh, I'm not doing that for a hundred bucks a week. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh sorry i saw i saw a couple of uh of job descriptions recently looking for um like uh like child care type people nannies and, mm -hmm. and and preschool teachers and and such and the job requirements that they were asking of these people you know degrees and experience and yeah sure and we'll pay you a hundred dollars a week uh, i mean that's it, it's insane what people right. think they can uh, they can get away with, um, right? But because uh, um, there's qualifications yeah. intermixed in there, which is related, but it, it it's like there are like you said, they're shooting for all of these things. Right. That's not your that's not actually your your responsibility. It's like what qualifies yeah. you to get that role, kind of a thing. Yeah. So but, I just want uh, what, to think about what that. They should yeah. do what they should do. What the employer should needs to do and the employee needs to look for is before starting job day one of uh you know it's like okay where is it written what is my written job description yes and yes. Uh, and getting that um you know especially if you happen to be close to the uh to the employer um mm -hmm. you know a lot of times uh, people get jobs because of who they know mm -hmm. you know in in at, to at least some degree and yep. i've found in the past that if you know the person that means even more so that you need to get things in writing. Uh, 100%. And, uh, um, yeah, it's because uh, you, you you don't want to lose the relationship over uh, over something like a job. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, I, I, in fact, I, I work with a client just to that point, Bill, Bill um, yeah. where this this person's a, a new supervisor and they're, they, they referred somebody that, that's a friend of theirs coming in and so i can act as an independent third party in some of this because of the dynamics of that friend like you said and depending on where you are in your roles and responsibilities and this is just more complicated because i have somebody that's now a new supervisor that's managing a friend that they know you know you know and so there's a different dynamic there uh and and so and new skill set so i come in as a third party into the organization to help navigate that understanding because it could be sticky as you like you said bill very sticky yeah. if you're not careful. And so they're very thoughtful about that, you know? Um, so I a hundred percent agree with you, Bill, in that when you come in and you start your job, whatever level you are in the company, I don't care if you're the president, the CEO, to the HR director, to whatever level you are, mm -hmm. have some, some written role and responsibility. You probably have, should have, Hopefully you have just one role, but depending on the company, you may have multiple roles, but let's just say you have one role and ideally you have one role and those responsibilities are, are clearly identified or what I call your key performance indicators or your metrics, whatever, what are you going to be evaluated on? So for, for me, Bill, a lot of times we use a, the, in consulting, um, we use a utilization goal, meaning how much of your time is being accounted for a particular project versus non-project related, right? And so 
I worked in companies though um, where that wasn't clear. And then somebody gets a performance review and says, well, your goal was 80% and you're at 60. I had no clue. There was no, yeah. you know, number one, I had no clue. Number two, even if I did know, I had no way to check or look for that or how do, how do I evaluate that I'm actually achieving said responsibility on my part or at least, you know. And so understanding and getting clarification as to re reviewing that and, like you said, Bill, asking questions or being proactive as to, well, what does exactly this mean so that I'm actually achieving said you know, target or goal, right? Yeah. And I think we're going to get Luke. Luke uh, Kibler is going to be able to join us tonight. So I'll, I'll bring okay. him on. So go ahead and answer that question. And I'll bring on Luke. Well, um, yeah, just to, to continue on with what you're saying, um, you know, it's uh, definitely, um, it's like, uh, it's like report cards. Um, I'm getting, a, I'm, I'm taking classes right now towards, uh, towards a master's degree. And, uh, um, and I'm having trouble getting feedback from my instructor. You know, at this point, mm -hmm. it's like I'm doing this. I'm doing a similar kind of assignment right now this week that I did in the first week of the course, and he hasn't graded that first paper, that uh, that first assignment. And I don't know if I did well, and I should repeat. You know, basically repeat the assignment for the new uh, for the new thing, or if I should head in a different direction. Mm -hmm. He's not telling me. And I have no way to find out. I mean, the, you know, grades only come out at the end of the term. Yeah. And at that point, it'll be too late. Um, you know, and so, uh, um, so yeah, you definitely need to have ways for the employees and the employers, supervisors, and everybody in between to uh, to know where each person is at. Mm -hmm. You know, if uh, if they're if they're doing well, then it's keep on sailing. If they're not, then what direction do you need to head? Um, mm -hmm. You know, what uh, what course changes do you need to make? It, that is some great insight. And we've got Luke here too. Welcome, Luke. Uh, Thank you. Good as we're here. talking about roles and responsibilities and organizational structure. And I think you have, a, I'd love to have your perspective, Luke, because you have a, a, a great, um, I love that you have involved your family, your daughter in your business. And, and successfully, I, I've seen how you've integrated her and I've got to work with her too. So, but, but you know, when you bring somebody, and we talked about just before you came on here about like a friend relationship with somebody you're working with, but I think family is even more dynamic. Of like, right? How do you navigate that? Mm -hmm. You know, they're coming in and speaking to that business owner that's considering having a family member participate in their business, what as you as a business owner would you recommend and as far as roles and responsibilities that they should be aware of or pitfalls to consider? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, I want to start off by admitting it is not easy. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is a tough thing to do. And it's very difficult, especially when you have a friendship or family even mm -hmm. uh, to separate work and, and personal life. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but that is, first of all, number one, one of the first things you have to do is you have to establish, listen, as much as we want to treat our company like it's a family, I think it's more accurate and more productive to treat it like a team, mm -hmm. meaning, hey, listen, we're here to win as a team. We're here to have success yes. as a team. We're here to help everyone rise. And we're not doing anyone any favors if we cut each other huge breaks and turn a blind eye to big failings or shortcomings or places where you're handicapping the whole company just because we're giving you a, a free pass because you're a friend or a family. Um, we have to go, OK, we're on a team, a, a winning team. We're here to we're here to win the championship, so to speak. And if you ain't, if you ain't cutting it, you, you don't get to play kind of a thing. And that's a tough conversation to have. I'm not saying it's easy. Mm -hmm. It isn't. And, but I think that one of the things that I've implemented recently that's really helped, and I think you guys have already mentioned it, is you have to have very clear objectives and criteria of what success means, what success looks like, and what, what failing to meet the minimum standards of excellence looks like. So there's mm -hmm. that very clear bar. And now it's no longer you versus them. It's like, here's the standard. And mm -hmm. it, whether you hit it or not, it's, it's not an emotional thing. It's not me versus you. It's not sort of this subjective, personal thing. It's like, hey, these things have to happen at this level for us to continue to succeed together. Yep. And if it doesn't, I'm not doing you any favors by keeping you here uh, or pretending that it's okay. So mm -hmm. that 
really clear standard. Like I, we actually just put together a fresh set of KPIs for my daughter, as mm -hmm. well as each of our team members said, hey, this is what we're tracking. Uh, proactiveness, accomplishment of these things, certain level of efficiency. And a, we have sort of a scoring method that we're actually using with her because mm -hmm. with, with our team that is, is meant to bring in uh, production and revenue, we have revenue markers that we mark, track with them as well as yep. weekly activities to support those. But with her, she's not directly tied to revenue, but certainly the things that she does affects the revenue. Yep. So we're, we're tracking it in a different way through a scoring process, but we, we went back and forth about it throughout this last whole month getting really clear on how do we measure this and how do we, what a successful uh, operation in your role look like that, that has that domino effect on the success of the company and the team. So, so that'd be it. First of all, recognize it's tough. It's hard. But second of all, I, I don't actually recommend treating it like a family. You want to try mm. and treat it like a team as opposed to yeah. a family. You, there has to, because in order for everyone to succeed and win, you have to have clear criteria of what that means. And we got to grow together or or this isn't going to work. You can't cut people the free pass. But that for that, that you can get away with that and you can do that well as long as you set that very clear expectation and that measuring stick is here. Then now you both can agree on whether they're hitting it or not. Right. As opposed to it being this sort of fly by the seat of your pants. You know, it's not working. It's not working. It's not working. And then it kind of blows up at some point. If you can establish that as early on as possible, is here's what success needs to look like and here's where it needs to head. Then mm -hmm. you're both measuring it and you're finding ways to succeed together and you're trying to help everyone win towards that. And at some point it will become obvious if they're not going to do it or not. And mm -hmm. uh, that's where you just got to call it like it is. Again, I'm not saying it's easy. <laughs> that's what you really got to do for everyone's sake. Um, yeah. So uh, those I love are just to hear you doing that, Luke. What's yeah. that? I said, I love to hear that you're doing that. I think business owners get busy. I mean, they just get busy, right? Mm -hmm. And like, like you said, Bill, earlier, they don't write it down. Yeah. And then you try to hold people accountable to whatever that is. Like, I think you should be doing this or this is, mm -hmm. this was my priority. Well, I didn't know that was your priority. I, yeah. It wasn't clear to me. Mm -hmm. And I chose this thing because I like doing this thing. You said, that, you said, I need to do this too. So I'll just do this, you know? It turns out that, Things like this don't work themselves out very well. <laughs> if you let them play out and just go, oh, I'm sure it'll work out. No, it'll get worse. That's mm -hmm. what will happen. It'll get mm -hmm. harder and harder to deal with and harder and harder to address. And turning that around will get uh, next to impossible if you let it go on long enough. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I talk with the clients about this kind of regularly in, in my experience, too. When, when you have even if you have clear roles and responsibilities too, this is really important because I do perform performance reviews or employee evaluations, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And then I have um, folks that will want to do certain things and we have to understand, like you said, is this in alignment with where we're trying to go to achieve? Like, oh, I'd love to take this class or get this certificate. And I'm like, that's all well and good. But if it doesn't fit within the alignment of their role and where we're going with the company and they're like, oh, and yeah, I want the company to pay for this or give me the time to do this. And you're like, that's well, I mean, but that, that's not an alignment with what we want to do here. And there's a disconnect between the, em the employer and employee relationship and miss expectations and understanding to your point, Luke. It doesn't matter if it's family or friend. I mean, like I like your idea. It's a team. We all win together or we're going to lose together. We're all affected. We're all interconnected here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's one of the key points I brought up when we had our, our the past few weeks, uh, well, the first few weeks of the year, we had several meetings where we talked very clearly on expectations and goals and what we need to do to grow together. And one of the things that I, I talked about is, is, listen, your actions don't just affect you. You have to recognize that. If you're on this team, if you're uh, setting the bar down here and it has to be here and clients are interacting with us and they're having a bad experience or things aren't getting followed through that affects everybody's reputation it affects everybody's success success breeds success just like failure can tend to breed failure mm -hmm. and so understand it doesn't just affect you and mm -hmm. therefore we can't just we can't just let anything go there has to be a standard and a bar and we want to be known as a team of excellence and growth and and integrity and this is these are our core values and mm -hmm. we can't we simply cannot tolerate someone who isn't willing to live up to those core values yep. yes we'll allow for some growth we'll of course seek first to raise people up mm -hmm. but it's only so long as they're willing to be raised up right uh, and that's but yeah having that clear 
conversation, I think, really helped because it, at least in, in this recent experience I had, everybody really rallied around that. They go, yeah, I, I realize I want that that I'm affecting everyone and I want to succeed and I want you to succeed. I want you to succeed. And so I'm going to try and help you as well as help me. And part of how I do that is by doing well, by being mm -hmm. successful, by being diligent, by being focused, by being productive, by bringing value to this team. And by doing so, we all win. Um, so, but it, it takes some, some conscious effort to have that. Uh, very, very intentional, conscious effort. Bill, we want to share your thoughts on this. Um, actually, uh, Luke, you touched on something um, that uh, that brought to mind, um, you know, about uh, uh, about KPIs, key performance indicators. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, um, a lot of places, especially where sales is heavily involved in the uh, um, in the in the position, will use revenue as a KPI, as an important KPI, mm -hmm. and I feel that can emphasize the wrong things that instead of using revenue you should be using the things that lead to revenue the right, the right actions that right. Uh, um you know the the doing the right thing by each client investigating and all that and mm. revenue will take care of itself at that point um or, or it won't uh, i mean that that just depends on uh you know on what you're offering to the uh, to the clients i i found that myself in uh, in the past that uh, um that uh you know shooting for uh, for revenue is just uh it, it's it's going to end up it's going to end up biting you in the backside because you're sure. going to have some salesperson that uh, um that is going to you start using pressure tactics and uh, um, I've seen some people um, use uh, use some really like uh, like the kind of thing where it's like oh sign up for it now and in 15 days cancel you'll get your money back and I'll get credit for the sale mm -hmm. kind of uh, kind of right. things. Right. And, uh, um, you know, I, I've, I've seen that in insurance and, uh, and auto sales and I, I've sold a few things in my life. One of, <laughs> one of I, some, uh, one of my, my first sales job was uh, selling greeting cards. Greeting cards. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Nice. Um, yeah. I was, let's see. Uh, was, <laughs> it was a few years ago. <laughs> seven, eight years old. Something yeah. like that. I went door to door selling, uh, selling greeting cards. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, both, <laughs> I think pretty early. both of you touch on, I think, a valuable topic here. The, the, the pick certainly pick the right metrics, but there's there's a specific role and responsibility that we have. But we've talked about this in previous episodes, and I, I, it's worth, mm -hmm. I think, revisiting is what are you know, we talk about your mission, your vision, and then your values, right? Your core values, those apply to every role within the company, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So what you're saying, Bill, is if you're not leading that, living that value, well, you, you just listed a bunch of them, Luke, mm -hmm. right? doesn't matter whether, where you are in the org chart. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody adheres to those values, correct? Right? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. You know? That's so, awesome. yeah. You yeah. have um, to make sure that those marry up. Yeah, like you said, the, Bill. Those yeah. values are, uh, are so important, and you have to pick the right values. I mean, mm -hmm. this, is a, this, is, this is games theory 101. You know, kind of stuff you know mm -hmm. get your garden to weed itself don't uh don't emphasize don't um don't reward the wrong behaviors um i think it was the chicago school system um in, in trying to catch up with all this uh no child left behind uh um policies uh, of the federal government um encouraged their instructors to not let any child get left behind which is good kind mm -hmm. of except that they were passing students who really shouldn't have they needed more help and mm -hmm. uh and, but the teachers were getting rewarded because the students were uh, were pulling ahead mm -hmm. yeah. or at least pushed. appeared to be pulling ahead <laughs> yeah they appeared yeah. to be pulling ahead yeah and uh you know that that can go yeah absolutely every every level of the company um you need to uh to watch out for mm -hmm. and for rewarding the wrong behavior mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I think, um, you know, in keeping with the theme here of, of roles and responsibilities, I think, uh, you know, it all does come down to the leader in many ways. The leader is the one who sets the tone. The leader is generally the chief bottleneck of, of the success and growth of the company. Yep. And the, one of the most important elements of growing beyond that bottleneck problem is instilling genuine stewardship in your team. 
where they truly believe that they have a, like an ownership responsibility for the success of of their team members and their, their, their comrades and the ones that are alongside trying to win together, um, that they feel a genuine sense of freedom in their role to lead it, that they each see themselves as a leader of sorts. Um, that's, that's part of what I try to instill in like, like my daughter, like, Hey, you're, I, I don't want you coming to me, asking me what you should do in every decision you need to make. I want you to make the decision. I want you to feel mm-hmm. free that they, once you've learned how these things need to work, I want you to take it and own it. And if you yep. see something you can, that needs to be done better, do it better and just let me know what you did and I'll give you some feedback on it. But I want you, when you come to me with a, a, a concern, a challenge, I want you first to solve it yourself. Come to me with your 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 uh, suggestions and solutions rather than just saying, hey, dad, tell me what to do. Um, mm-hmm. Same thing with my advisors and agents as they're, as they're learning and growing. I'm saying, listen, I want you to, to truly own this. Uh, this is this is yours to build and to develop and to contribute to the success of the whole and give them that sense of autonomy, not micromanagement. Uh, and that's where they start to take on that that role very personally and, and take ownership. And that's where I think they really start to develop in their role in a way that that tends to take on that life of its own. Like you just mentioned, Bill, I really like that. Uh, giving your garden weed itself. Right. You, you, you have to give people the freedom uh, to to step up and actually operate in their role and to truly own it and to make decisions and have some autonomy within the guidelines and principles that the company operates in. And it's our mm-hmm. job as leaders to set that framework and to keep those guidelines intact and, and headed the right direction. But I think within the roles, giving people that freedom and that uh, that sense of ownership and responsibility and leadership is, is, is absolutely essential. You got to let them let them let them make some mistakes too. let them let them lead some things make decisions. Um, you have to let go. That's a hard thing to do, especially for good small business owners, Luke. So it's very hard. I'm not saying I'm perfect at it for the record. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm giving myself some advice here. <laughs> right. Right. But no, you, you hit on a couple different topics there, Luke, because if you, if you are so tight fisted and you are that bottle, like you said, the bottleneck, you, you can hinder innovation and growth there's an appropriate risk that you can take at certain levels, right? Um, at each, each level within the company um, that you want to be able to, and that's leading by example, like you said. Um, so how you show up as a leader is basically, like you said, setting the tone of like that, of like how they should conduct themselves, mm-hmm. you know? Um, there's a great book uh, I read um, by Simon Sinek uh, called start with why and he recounts a story of trying to get on the plane and i don't remember the airline but this lady was just barking at them all the those passengers trying to like get in line make sure you're here da-da. it just was not a warm and a welcoming experience and and he said why do you do this she's like if i don't do my job i'm gonna get yelled at or i'm gonna get in trouble there was just a sense of like her role was like fear-based in like this control kind of situation so what does she do she just pushed that on the clients the customers mm-hmm. that's what she was being how, how managed and in, in her role and how she was told to be responsible and though therefore it just reflected right down, on down the line mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. who rolls down the hill Indeed. <laughs> right <laughs> it does it um does. so this is this is really important your 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 point um luke of how you show up in how that affects the individual, the company culture. We've talked about that in previous episodes, and we just talked a little bit about ethics as well, um, and in how that looks. And this is an interesting thing because before you got on, Luke, we talked about you know as the company changes and grows, the organizational structure changes. Sometimes it can be flat. Sometimes there's these different stages in, in how the company needs to be. And this is a real challenge. I went through a company that we went. You know, we were a million dollars a year the first year I came in. And when I left, we were over $7 million a year in revenue. Those are just dynamically different experiences in the infrastructure you need to have to support that business. Mm-hmm. And and everything and so on and so forth, as you get bigger, you have different life cycles of the business. What I found working in the business owner in that case is it was frustrating for her because she thought, well, I could just set this organizational chart and it's good. And it's like it wouldn't, it, it didn't, it, it had to morph and it, it would not stay that way. 
And we talked a little bit earlier about outside consultants, which is important, HR or others, which is good. But just realizing this is a lot of turmoil and change for people because they're like, well, I thought I was hired to do this and I'm doing some of this stuff. But now I've got these other things that are coming up three, six, 12 months down the line. They're like, mm -hmm. but and I, now I got to do these things. And but I also got to let go of these things because I can't do these things and this. So kind of talk to, I mean, you're, you're kind of at the front end and either one of you, if you want to join it, jump in, maybe I'll start with you, Bill, first and then come to Luke. But just talk a little bit about what you maybe have personally experienced in that in that evolution. If you worked anywhere for an extended period of time, right, where you started is not where you ended. And, and what did that look like for you? Uh, and what was that conversation or experience? So, Bill, I'll start with you first. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Um, well, uh, well, we'll start with uh, with my insurance experience. <laughs> um, you know, uh, yeah. Um, I started out uh, working for a uh, for a particular major national company, and uh, um, they, it was a fine experience, all in all. But uh, um, but yeah, it, it started out as an account manager position and then morphed into a sales position, which added on to it, uh, developing social media for the, uh, for the agency. And, uh, um, so it was just kind of all over the place and it, it was a great experience in the end, but, uh, um, but it was like, it wasn't what I was originally thinking it was going to be going into it. And even once I was in it, it, kind of changed and 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 uh, um and went uh went a little awry um and it was it was stressful for a while um mm -hmm. you know and because it was like you know and like how do you bring up to your your supervisor or whoever's responsible for your uh, for your job description um how do you even bring that up you know, it's like, you know, it's like, okay, well, I, I needed this job. So I was kind of worried about losing it. Um, you know, a lot of people uh, are certainly in that position. Um, a lot of people aren't um, in that position. Uh, um, God bless them. But, uh, um, you know, uh, um, yeah, what do you, yeah, what do you do when, uh, when the, when the job description keeps changing? Because it's never been written down. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I think um, I think there's a lesson in that for sure. I, I had a similar experience working at a big bank, um, uh, which I don't mind naming Citibank. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, I got hired in there with all my life and uh, insurance licenses, securities licenses, investments, all that stuff. I had everything when I was hired there. And I went from being an independent advisor type of role to working as an advisor at a bank. And the reason I went there was this stability, security, and but I expected to be doing the advisory stuff there. What I ended up doing was loans and lines of credit and new bank accounts and, and zero work that I, I loved and expected to do. And it got kept getting shifted around and, and changed to exactly what you're talking about. And ultimately it was frustrating and I wasn't satisfied. And ultimately I left because it just, you know, it was mm -hmm. I, I grew to just kind of resent what I did. And I think the lesson there is, well, as leaders of organizations and as uh, leaders of companies of any kind, your people need that kind of clarity, that expectation. Mm -hmm. Expectation is everything. Um, I know we teach this to our agents and advisors that uh, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, of course, it matters whether you do something right or wrong. But I mean, you could do something exactly right. But if the client expected something different in their eyes, you did it wrong. In their eyes, they had a bad experience. Um, and you could have done it exactly how it normally goes, exactly how it's supposed to go. But they thought it was going to do this and it did that. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they're upset, frustrated, disenchanted, you know, and everything. So expectation is reality. And you have to set the expectations with your team as to what exactly success looks like, what the role looks like, what they'll be doing. Uh, mm -hmm. And I learned this lesson as well, a bit, you know, the hard way when I was willing to bring on some new people to my organization and you know in my eagerness and in my optimism i just kind of figured they knew what they were getting into yep. and what they wanted them to do and uh let's just say things didn't work out all that well and they're no longer mm -hmm. around and um and so i've taken to uh, trying to scare people away a little bit initially by giving them the cold hard facts of hey this is what the job involves this is what this business and this career path involves 
here's the great side of it, but here's the challenge side of it. Here's all the other things that you're probably not going to enjoy doing day to day, but have to get done. Here's mm-hmm. the kind of person that succeeds. Here's the kind of person that fails. Here's right. the good and the bad and the ugly of the role and of, of this industry and of everything that goes with it. And if you can be okay with that, you can do this. Um, yeah. so if you still love what you hear, then we got something to talk about, but being very candid and very clear, um, giving that candor right up front of this is everything good and bad. Don't sugarcoat it. Don't, don't uh, paint it, dress it up nice and, and hide the things that aren't as, as uh, savory and enjoyable. Uh, just lay it out. So this is, this is everything. So mm-hmm. that clarity I think is, is critical, but you know, like it says in that book, uh, who moved my cheese? I don't know if you guys have read that book, oh, Yeah. book, right? Change is the one thing you can count on. So yep. you have to, as a company and as a culture, invite and welcome change and be looking for it, which is why one of our other core values is growth. Uh, growth is a core value that we that we uh, publicly uh, ascribe to, along with the integrity and the excellence, the other things I mentioned. Growth is very purposefully part of our company culture and uh, and our core values because we want to be anticipating and looking for that growth and change rather than mm-hmm. fighting it. Finding ways that we continually are growing, get get comfortable with being uncomfortable because we're not here to coast. Uh, right. if are, it's just a slow death typically. So you have to build in and I think and breed and, and, and embrace that reality that you must evolve and grow uh, in, in a variety of ways, which means change. And change is something mm-hmm. not, none of us like. We like to get comfortable and settle in. Uh, but that's not how business works. Uh, somebody's constantly moving the cheese, especially if you're growing. <laughs> so, right? Yeah. You've got to be looking in at, for it. You've got to be expecting it rather than being adverse to it. Uh, that that's that's a great point, Luke. I mean, when I came on uh, the company uh, before I started my other company, uh, I came on as a, a, a COO, which really actually at the time was kind of an overkill, chief operating officer. But I came into that position, and that was where you know, the owner thought that she really needed help. Over time, we evolved that. I was a director of biology. I switched that based on other needs. Like you said, there's shifts, both in business development. So what I found personally, as I've grown, especially in organization, uh, when I was younger, I was more focused to whatever the title that I was given. Um, and then I realized, okay, the title, yeah, it has some value, but it really is understanding where do I fit within the organization? And again, what are those responsibilities that I fit that fit under the umbrella? I'm being really clear about that. Mm-hmm. One challenge I, I found though at, over the years um, is there are, I'll use titles because title is not necessarily, there are some things in there, but you don't, it's, it's a little nebulous. So when I say you're the president of a company, well, what does that mean? What does that incorporate? So the president of a company that be, could mean a lot of different things. Uh, they have some core things, don't get me wrong, but, or if I say you're the vice president or you're the director, okay, what what does that mean? And so what I found is some confusion or challenges in organizations because you have an outward facing title that is to the clients or to the world, that means one thing, that may not mean the same thing inside the organization, or you may have different things that you talk about internally. And so I've I've... I'm sharing this as business owners because I feel like this is something that comes up, at least in my world, because I I work in the AEC, architecture, engineering, construction, and biologists and engineers, and I'm engineer one, I'm engineer two, engineer three, I'm biologist one, two, three, I'm a senior biologist, I'm a principal biologist, I'm a wildlife ecologist, I'm a botanist. There is a lot of roles, so if I just use my biology hat for a sec, I could could be a wildlife biologist, I could be a, a, a botanist, I could be a GIS specialist, there's a lot of things I can do under the particular role, right? So there's titles I feel, and for particularly companies that do any kind of consulting um, where you are giving a rate table or titles and there's a title and dollar amount that you're saying here, this is the contract and this is the role I'm feeling that doesn't always match up directly with what the role is within the company. I mean, so I, I want you guys just to think about this or if you haven't, maybe I don't your feedback, but this is something I've run into over the years because we have to crosswalk what does that mean from an external role that's to a client and they understand you a certain way. And what does that mean internally into the organization? It may be the same, but it's it's sometimes there's there's confusion. And so just 
thoughts there. Maybe I'll just start with you, Luke. If, if consider if, if that's been an issue for you or just your thoughts on that um, as you're thinking about what you are internally and what you are externally. Like, what do you put on a business card, right? Because, you know, mm -hmm. what does that look like? It may be the same, but it's it could be different. Yeah, I yeah, I, I can see how that certainly can happen in a variety of ways. I think, you know, as a company, we endeavor to have complete congruency in what we do and see and perceive ourselves as internally, as well as what the client experiences and expects. Uh, you know, and I would guess that if you um, if you have that kind of clarity as a company as to this is what uh, an agent does or what a administrative manager does or what a president does, that that would flow outward to the rest of the world uh, with some consistency. Uh, and then though while people may come to your company with an, a certain expectation of, well, this is what I think you do. Hopefully, if your processes and everything about how you operate is congruent, they'll quickly learn what it means that your role is. Mm -hmm. Here's my job, you know, and that's part of what we we try to do as well when we work with clients is set that expectation. Like, listen, you'll hear from Laura to set appointments. You'll be working with so and so to get your application process. You'll be working with me to do the planning or whatever. And we we help our team, uh, help our clients and and our, and our partners understand mm -hmm. who does what and what these titles mean. Uh, so I, I would hope that if you're doing to me, if you're doing things right, while well, people may come with a certain expectation, the moment they encounter or engage with you, they quickly learn that there's that congruency, that consistency of exactly what everybody's meant to operate in and what these roles mean. So I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I think that's great uh, feedback, Luke. I know we'll, we're going to make it a, a shorter episode or we'll wrap it up here shortly. Bill, I know you're going to need to head out here. Uh, yep. Some thoughts here as we're, or we're getting near the end of the episode. Um, well, um, you know, I think, uh, I think a lot of this, uh, goes back to what we, uh, you know, comes back full circle to, uh, to where we started in, uh, in the discussion and in being clear about what it is, what the expectations are, you know, have mm -hmm. it in writing and, uh, um, you know, and, uh, um, you know, Luke, uh, Luke was the first to bring up, uh, KPIs and, and, uh, and I think that's an important thing to include. Um, because we need to have a way to track how we're doing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what, uh, what are the key performance indicators? Um, what's expected of us? And how can we measure it? Um, you know, and uh, yeah, that way that that takes all so much stress off of uh, off of the positions, both, uh, both as uh, employee and employer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, being 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 very clear on that mm -hmm. and continuing to go back to that. And if anything's off or out of alignment, you have something to go back and look at and say, yeah. Hey, there's a disconnect here. Right. How do we correct that? And you can always reevaluate those needs, both the Absolutely. employer and the employee can go back to it. Mm -hmm. Don't, you mm -hmm. know, the, these things aren't set in stone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that's, that's a very important to think about um, Bill. And I appreciate your, your perspectives on this tonight. Um, and Luke coming on board here too. We actually could go a lot more into this, uh, and I'm 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 excited. We'll be coming back again. I'm I'm gonna, but this is important. I think Luke, I'm so glad to hear you guys spending and investing the time. I work with business owners that it's a little bit of an afterthought, and so I work with them. So the, the, those are that are getting stuck or not having a plan or how to get where to get started. I mean, reach out to any of us. This is kind of where my area of, of, that I like to focus in is overall organizational health. And this is certainly one of the key areas we didn't even get into tonight, which I'd love to have a new episode on can actually conducting performance reviews or an evaluation. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? Understanding the roles and responsibilities, because that's a whole nother thing because I work with, but that I, I talk with employees about like, how do I get evaluated? We talked about KPIs, but there's one thing, there's a whole process in evaluating it as a supervisor or working with somebody giving them feedback and going through all that. So we may come back on a future episode uh, to, to dig into that. Um, but as we're wrapping up, uh, Luke, any last thoughts or comments here tonight on kind of roles and responsibilities? I really appreciate some of your key, key takeaways and shares tonight. Um, yeah, I guess a couple quick thoughts is uh, just keying in on what Bill just mentioned, what we've been talking about, the theme of, of continual evolution and growth. While you want to set a very clear course, path and, and direction and roles and all that is be be willing to adjust. Don't be so rigid that you get in your own way. But then the other thing, I guess, is that once you do establish a role, 
you establish a, a clear criteria of what it means to be X, then you got to stick to it. Uh, and that's the other thing that, you know, even personally, I, I know was hard for me as we started growing, as I started adding to my team and defining those roles is one thing to define them. It's another thing to actually do it. Implement it implementation is key and, and you might have to really hammer it for a good month before it actually sticks, which means every week you're revisiting going, okay, we said we'd do this, but we're still doing this. Yep. And you just got to keep course correcting until it becomes the new normal. And so yep. I just want to encourage people, like if you're having a struggle with that, don't give up, persevere relentlessly with what you know is the best practice, what you know is the role you should be operating in. You're going to, you're going to screw it up for a while when you try to change direction, when you try to do it better, you're going to keep diverting back to your bad habits. Uh, that's, you know, big problem I yeah. had was delegating and I kept taking it back and then I delegated again, then I take it back. I'm like, I gotta stop doing this. So I just, again, number one, that continuous growth, but number two, you know, stick to it. You know, once you do define it, understand it's not going to just switch. You're going to have to reinforce, reinforce until it becomes a new normal. And so that's, that's okay. But 100% Luke. stick to that reinforcement as you yeah. Could, these definitions and roles dialed in. So yep. thank you for sharing that, Luke. We, we, we will be coming back to you guys again uh, with much more great content. Uh, please leave any comments you have, uh, uh, feedback. We love hearing from you uh, on the last podcast. We had some great comments and interactions. Um, and so please share those, share the, share the podcast. You find it valuable with others. Um, we also welcome other guests tonight. It's Bill and Luke and myself. Uh, we always varying the the, the 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 hosts here, um, so we appreciate you guys uh, spending time with us. Have an amazing night. Until next time, this is David Carr with Bill Hatch and Luke Kibler. Wishing you all the best. Have a good night, guys. Good night. Good night. Thank you.